had Sudanese friends who was able to take me to their country. So they took me to Southern Sudan where I met my baby daddy. That was 2006. When I reached there, okay, I was, I was, I was a young girl. I was like 21 years old where everyone was asking like, what is this kid doing here? Because I didn't know the kind of life that women are leading there. And uh, security was not good. They were raping girls, beating them up, killing them, especially when you don't date a South Sudanese man. So when I met my baby daddy, because when they knew that you are dating a Sudanese at least, you would be safe. So I met my baby daddy in that 2006 and I was still working there so often I could come home after every three months I could come home visit the family my siblings and my mom go back there then in 2009 the Lord blessed me the child I conceived but life was not good over there there were no hospitals, the place was so hot and I was ever sick, so I decided to come back home. When I came home, the guy was irresponsible. He never sent me money, whenever I could call him, he was like, I'm going to talk to dad and all that, so. I left him, I started living my life. I could sell chips to survive with the pregnancy that time. And I met the father, he called me, that was the father-in-law now, he called me and told me that my daughter, don't worry, I'm going to support you. He, he encouraged me, so at least he was supporting me a little by little. When I gave birth, when my daughter reached six months, I took my baby to him. Still the dad promised me that he's gonna support me, so. He was supporting me. I'm so grateful because if it's not this man, I wasn't going to have my child. Life was so hard for me. I didn't have money. I didn't have a job. My baby daddy was responsible. So I thank Almighty God. He was there for me. He supported me until my daughter reached one year old. Then it's like he washed his hands on me and left me. I started struggling with my life, yeah. I could leave my daughter with a house girl, go back to that Sudan to work. But after every two weeks, I could come home to look after my daughter. I continued with that kind of life until 2014 when a friend came through for me. She was working in China. So when we met in Sudan, and uh, we met in our friend's house, actually she was not even a close friend. When we met in the house, um, she was telling us to go to China with her. But everyone was not serious, and me, I, I became serious, and she was like, Ruth, unakwanga roju, why can't you go? You will survive over there. Life is hard, it's like here, but when you survive in Sudan, you will survive in China, so you can just go. And I agreed to go, and I started asking. I was interested, and she told me that 130,000 is enough for you to go to China. So I made effort, I worked, I raised the money, and I came back to Nairobi and went. I went to China. I left my daughter with the house girl. So when I reached there, life was so hard for me because I was new in a place. There is no visa. I don't have money. I don't have a job. At the same time, I left my daughter with the house girl. And I'm not used to leave her that long. So it was forcing me to stay for some few months, then come home. But my daughter was not OK because house girls, sometimes they can disturb a lot. So someone just told me that your daughter is not okay. You have to come home. So whenever I could feel that my daughter is not safe, she's not fine, I could just rush to come home because I had no one to look after her. My own sisters are here in Nairobi, but yet they could not look after my daughter. 
the time that I was there in Sudan, I was at least helping my family. But when I conceived, life changed. No one could look after my child or no one cared about my life because I'm not giving anymore like I used to. So everyone was like, everyone, everybody for herself or himself. I started living my own life with my daughter alone. So that's how I was living in China. Every time my friends could ask me that, you, you are just working for the ticket every now and then, you're always going home. But they didn't know the reason why I could just go to Nairobi every time I'm going to Kenya, because my daughter is not well. Even neighbors could send me messages that your daughter is not fine.